Good morning, church. We want to welcome you all here this morning. You're ending your year right. Um, I'm going to ask you guys to welcome your neighbor. Tell them your New Year's resolution this year. <laughs> Please remain standing and join me in our opening hymn, number 55. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But we confess our sins. God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We'll take a moment for reflection. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you, and for his sake God forgives you all your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. 
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you wonderfully created the dignity of human nature and yet more wonderfully restored it. In your mercy, let us share the divine life of the one who came to share our humanity, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The first lesson is from the 61st chapter of Isaiah, beginning with verse 10. I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation and arrayed me in the robe of his righteousness. As a bridegroom adorns his head like a priest and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels, for as the soil makes the sprout come up and a garden causes seeds to grow, So the sovereign Lord will make righteousness and praise spring up before all nations. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not remain quiet. Till her vindication shines out like the dawn, her salvation like a blazing torch. The nations will see your vindication and all kings your glory. You will be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will bestow. You will be a crown of splendor in Lord's hand and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. Today's responsive reading is from Psalm 111. Let us read it responsively by half verse. Praise the Lord. I will extol the Lord with all my heart. Great are the works of the Lord. They are honored by all who delight in them. Glorious and majestic are his deeds. And his righteousness endures forever. He has caused his wonders to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and compassionate. 
He provides food for those who fear him. He has shown his people the power of his works. The works of his hands are faithful and just. They are established forever and ever. He provided redemption for his people. He ordained his covenant forever. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who follow his precepts have good understanding. The second lesson is from the fourth chapter of Galatians, beginning with verse 4. But when the set time had fully come, God sent his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law, that we might receive adoption to sonship. Because you are his sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, the spirit who called out, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but God's child. And since you are his child, God has made you also an heir. Here ends the reading. Gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter. When the time came for the purification rites required by the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people, Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him, then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Penuel of the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage and then as was a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped night and day, fasting and praying. Coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. When Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth, and the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was on him. The Gospel of the Lord.
want to welcome you all here again and thank you for joining us here and ending your year on a good note. For those of you who do not know me, I'm Amanda Farmer and I'm the youth director here at Zion. I always like to start each of my messages with a little bit about myself. I was born and raised here in Clear Lake and I graduated from Clear Lake many years ago. Mrs. Schumacher was actually one of my teachers. In high school, I didn't ever want to have kids. I basically helped raise my niece because my sister had a kid at 16. And I told myself that that was never going to be me. Having kids wasn't going to stop me from doing all the things that I wanted to do. But oh, how God had different plans for me. Years before I would come to him, he was probably looking down on me and laughing, knowing what was ahead of me. Making his future plans for me, he thought, yep, she's going to have three kids, and they're all going to be girls. And then on top of it, they're going to be close in age so that the teenage years will be fun. <laughs> when I think of it, I think that my favorite childhood memory of mine was not paying bills. Now I've always said that I only have about three friends. And by friends, I mean the ones that I can call or text if I'm stuck in a ditch somewhere, or the ones who I would ask to pray for my mom or dad if they're in the hospital or the ones who actually get invited over to my house when it's a complete mess. Someone once said that out of all the stories in the Bible, the one thing that they had the hardest time believing out of everything in there is that Jesus had 12 friends after the age of 30. The last time that I preached, I told you how the Jewish people had waited 700 years before the Messiah was born to save them. These days, I can barely have the patience to wait five minutes, or my kids can't wait five minutes before they immediately expect me to respond to their texts. Now let's put ourselves in the shoes of the Jewish people in the days right before Jesus or John the Baptist were born. God had not spoken through prophets in about 400 years. You can find this period of time between Malachi and the New Testament. So do you think some of them started wondering if God had forgotten them? That maybe God had forgotten to send their Messiah? So imagine waiting and waiting and waiting, wondering if anyone is even listening to you. Has there ever been a time in your life when you may have begun doubting God's faithfulness? Maybe you've wondered if God has forgotten you. Maybe this year seems that way. Maybe this has been a tough year for you. You've endured difficult things, and now the new year is starting, and you still haven't gotten over the trauma of the current year we are in. And you don't know what to expect next year. How many of you have made New Year's resolutions? How easy it is to say that you're going to get healthy and fit, you're going to stop smoking, or you're going to stop being late all the time. You're going to stop procrastinating. The list can go on and on. But how many of us follow through with what we say we are going to do? It's so easy to do these things to be better for a week or two, maybe even a month. But then we fall back into those same habits. And the next thing you know, it's 2024, and the new year has begun, and it's time to make those same resolutions again. The year fills up with busyness and is gone as quickly as it started. Maybe those 700 years of waiting didn't seem so long after all. The goal that I set for myself this year was to focus on the things that matter and the people in my life that are there for me. The ones who make it a point to check in and see how I'm doing the ones that I trust to speak into my life. People who want to see you succeed and are truly happy for you when you do. Those three people who I considered my friends. Going into 2023, I told myself I was going to be content. We are now a day away from 2024, and I'm still working on that. Contentment is something that can be difficult for many people. There's always more. I remember as a kid, my family never went on vacations. 
or at least the type of vacations that other kids would go on. We never took trips to Florida every year or went to Cabo on spring break. And I always wish that my parents would do stuff like that for us, just like all of my friends. Now looking back, I realized what I had was much better and that my parents worked really hard for the life that they provided for us. I had parents who gave us the life that some dreamed to have and I learned that memories didn't have to be made by getting on a plane. As an adult, I also realized that family vacations are super expensive and I completely agree with my parents' decisions to go nowhere. But it's so natural to want what others have or to ask God, why does so-and-so get this and I don't? And most of the time, it's material things. We like to have the shiny things. I'm 35 years old, and I'm still waiting for the day that my parents tell me the truth, that they're secretly millionaires, and we've lived this way my whole life because they wanted to teach me to be humble. But money and objects... They're they're just things. They're not the things that make us who we are or who we truly are. I'm not just a mom. I'm not just a friend or a wife. I'm not just a title. It's in those moments that we need to focus on whose we are rather than what we are. I want you to take a second to think about that. Who am I? What kind of person am I? What kind of changes can I make this year? And what can you realistically accomplish? For followers of Jesus, New Year's has no unique significance. But it does tell us that time, seconds, minutes, hours, days, weeks, months, years, are a gift to us from a good, good God. In Psalm 90, 12, Moses asks of the Lord, teach us to number our days so we may get a heart of wisdom. In a sense, each day with Jesus is a chance to turn the page on an old way of life and embrace a new one. We are, after all, a new creation of people, and we serve a king who renews us daily by the Holy Spirit. Many of us will set out the year of 2024 to become more faithful followers of Jesus. We're going to read our Bibles more. We're going to attend and volunteer at church more. Those are worthy resolutions. Jesus wants his followers to place everything under his lordship. He wants our gifts. He wants our talents and our careers, our money and time, our health, our thoughts and aspirations, our words deeds. He wants our dreams. He wants our everything. And God doesn't call us into something only to leave us to fend for ourselves. He is with us. He provides for us. And he will enable us. He wants to be a part of your life. Don't make the will of God a resource. Make it a relationship. I'm going to say that again. Don't make the will of God a resource. Make it a relationship. God doesn't want us committed more to a system than we are committed to a source. He doesn't want us just going through the motions. It's the same reason that when Jesus was performing miracles, each one was different. Maybe you've been praying for something And you feel like God just isn't hearing you. And you say to yourself, well, God, here I am. I've been reading my Bible. I pray. I go to church. I'm doing all the things that I think I'm supposed to do. So why aren't you speaking into my life right now? But God is saying, I've been here. But you were looking in the wrong places. I was with you today at breakfast. I was with you today when you were at work. I was with you today when you were doing all the things that you thought you could do without me. Now you need to ask yourself if you are prepared enough to give it up all up to him. Not just on a Sunday morning, but every single day. 
Are you willing to be an open follower of Christ, even if it's not the popular thing to do? Even if it means giving up your Sunday morning to sleep in or to go out for breakfast? After all, Jesus was willing to die for us. What are we willing to do? Sometimes we have to go through our season of Job, as I like to call it. Job had more than just a bad year happen to him. He went through it all. His property was stolen. His sons and daughters lost their lives. He lost his farm animals and his servants. One bad thing after another happened, and each time he was knocked down, he got back up. He could have let his emotions take hold of his decisions, but Job was a devoted follower of God, and he faced those trials that no one would ever want to go through. He remained faithful to God even when his friends and his wife gave him bad advice. His family was ultimately blessed because of his obedience. How easy it would be to listen to what others tell you. When bad things happen, it's hard for us to stay positive. It's hard to see the good things when all you can do is focus on the bad thing happening in that moment. But Job said, good things happen to everyone and bad things happen to everyone. But just because something is bad is happening to me does not mean that God is punishing me. Maybe having that contentment that I talked about earlier isn't such a bad thing after all. When trials and misfortunes happen to us, we cannot let them consume us. But we can seek God for comfort, and he will lead us, and he will grant us faith and strength. So maybe your year has been a season of Job. And there may be things that you cannot change, but the posture of your heart is one thing that you do have control over. God knows our hearts, while the world knows our exterior. Is your 2024 resolution going to change the person on the outside or the person on the inside? Following Jesus certainly comes with a cost for those who choose to follow. And I want each and every one of us to be more Not just because we should, but because I know that each and every one of us can be. I want each of us to start this new year being the better person that we are right now. So many of us are already good people, but I want us to be great, and I want us to be able to share that with the world. So if there's one thing that we can do in this new year, it's starting fresh this year with Jesus by your side. And it's not always the popular thing to do, like I said earlier. Especially these days when everyone has an opinion on what we should believe and what we should do. To follow the calling that God has placed on us can be a difficult journey sometimes. But just like Job, we must remain faithful and get back up. If you so choose, your new life is going to cost you your old one. It's going to cost you your comfort zone and your sense of direction. It might cost you relationships and friends. It's going to cost you being liked and understood, but it doesn't matter, and I'm going to tell you why. It doesn't matter because the people who are meant for you are going to meet you on the other side of whatever fence you find yourself on, even if there's only a few of them. And you're going to be able to build new comfort zones around the things that actually move you forward. And instead of being liked, you will be loved. Instead of being understood, you will be seen. All of you are going to lose, all you are going to lose is what was built for the person that you no longer are. You will be a new creation in Christ one whose light will shine so brightly that those around you will say, wow, the Holy Spirit must be moving in their life. So I encourage you all to live the new year boldly. Live it in a way that people know that you must be following Jesus. 
We have a new year to start fresh. When Jesus died for us, he took the burdens. So let things go. Let go of worry and pain and give it up to God. Because times can be tough, but so are you. Let God's yeses be bigger than everyone else's knows this year. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, Lord, as we go into this new year, I just pray for, for you to give us guidance, for you to reveal to us what it is that you have planned. Lord, what, what are things that we should be reaching towards? What are goals that we should set for ourselves, Lord? Lord, as we go on into this new year, I pray for health and safety. I pray that you would give us the courage to, to be, live boldly, that you would help us to be obedient, that you would help us to love one another, even when it's hard sometimes. Lord, we love you and we praise you, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us confess our faith as we join in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O oh Lord, we pray for healing and strength for all those in our congregation. We ask that you give them rest and that your healing hand would be upon them. Continue to restore them with your power, O oh God, and comfort all who struggle with your presence. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful God, we thank you for the beginning of a new year and your continued faithfulness to us. As we enter into a new season, help us to reflect on your gift to us, Jesus Christ. Help us to be witnesses to the good news of the gospel and the light to those around us. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, we cannot name all for whom we wish to pray this day. Some are known only to one or two of us, some are known only to you. Yet we wish to place them all under your loving care. So together we pray for all who are named silently this moment by any in our midst. Bless them, surround them with your love and perfectly provide for each one. Lord, in your mercy, into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please join me in the singing of the Lord's Prayer. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he look upon you in favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.